model steam engines and boilers part 42 making the crosshead guide bars and fitting some small brass oil cups. This series called How to Build a Model Steam Engine is for my Patreon supporters only. The full length versions of the episodes in the series contain a lot more information than you're about to see, but this is sufficient to give you a good idea how to do the job. Why is it a good idea to join Patreon? Firstly, you get to see the videos a few months before everyone else. You can download my ebook, The Essential Guide to Miniature Steam, which is completely free. And you can watch the entire series of How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which is over five hours of instructions. I would like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I could not make these videos without your kind help and support. This job on the surface looks very simple. Rummage through the box of bits and find the suitable pieces of steel. Discard the two short pieces because they're for something else and the long thin bit is the eccentric rod and you end up with these two pieces. And without looking at the drawing I think they measure 5 sixteenths by 3 sixteenths of an inch. Beware though, the edges of these for some reason are rounded. It's a bit of a pity really, I prefer if they weren't and this is going to make marking out and drilling the holes slightly more difficult. I need to make four bars, which are 3 and 7 sixteenths of an inch long. First of all, I measure the distance using my ruler, scribe a line, then scribe the line all the way across using a 90 degree set square. I repeat the process from both ends, and I end up with a small piece in the middle. All I have to do now is take it over to the bandsaw, clamp it in the vise, and chop it up. First one and then the other. After I end up with two pieces, I clean the end of them using my one inch belt sander. And yes, I know this is not very engineering like, what I should do is clamp them all in the milling machine, use a milling cutter to go across the end of each side. But in the time it would have taken me just to fit the milling cutter into the milling machine, I've cleaned up the edges of two of them. Here I'm cleaning the burrs underneath using wet or dry sandpaper. The story so far. Two of the four guides are now made. Time to repeat the process for the second set. It's a really good idea on this job to use marking out blue, because it does show up that the edges of these bars are rounded. I use the pieces of crosshead bar that had already cut to mark out the long piece of bar before I cut that too. Once again it's over to the bandsaw to cut the second piece of bar. And after cleaning up the second two pieces on the one inch belt sander, I end up with four pieces that are pretty much the same length as each other. Three and seven sixteenths of an inch. To confirm this, I hold them in an upright position on a steel rule, and by running my finger across the top of them, this confirms that they are all the same length. This next part is the important part, so take your time with it. I use a cross vise in my drilling machine, and the first thing to do is to clean it up thoroughly. For a packing, I'm using a piece of mahogany, which is accurately cut. I'm using a centre drill. You will notice that I'm using one of the pieces that are chopped out from the original long bars. And if I manage to get the hole in the centre of this, then everything's OK. How do you find the centre? Well, I generally do it by eye or use a ruler, but you can use things called wigglers or wobblers. If you want more information about these, just Google wiggler or wobbler. You will see that they are very simple and at the same time very clever gadgets. I do have a set. But generally I do use my eye first because over the years it's calibrated quite well. To any viewers watching this who want to build a steam engine following these directions though, please use the proper measuring equipment, whatever that may be. Here's something I do a lot but seldom show it on the videos. I'm not using a centre drill. What I'm doing is gently tapping the piece of metal with the end of the twist drill and eventually that makes a centre mark, then I can put pressure on the twist drill and it goes through where I want it to go through. Anything to save time, because that's something that we're all running out of. After the drilling operation, the underside of the bars look like this. It's very important to remove these burrs, and I'm doing that on a piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. And after I've cleaned up the bars, here they are. On two of them, I cleaned all the surfaces, but on the other two bars, I left the marking out blue in place so you can clearly see that there is a centre mark. The next part of the job can be a bit nerve-wracking. 
This is the small box of fixings that comes with the casting set. And in this small box were four studs, quite long studs which will end up holding the guide bars in place. If I've done the job properly, when I assemble these bars, they should all slide onto the studs. The holes in the end of the bars haven't been enlarged, they're just as I drilled them using a clearance size drill for 7BA. But if you have made a mistake and one or two of the holes are not in the right place, you can needle file them into the correct place and re-drill all the holes a larger size. This is not good engineering practice, but I have in the past done that frequently, particularly when I was a beginner, so I understand. Thankfully, in this case, all of the bars fit perfectly on the two studs. Now it's time to fit a pair of oil cups in the centre of the top bars only. I repeat that. The oil cups need to be fitted in the top bars, not in the bottom ones. The first thing to do is to verify the thread. And in this case, the thread on these oil cups is 5BA. The next part of the job involves first drilling holes in the two top bars in the centre position which are tapping size for 5BA and then of course tapping the hole. I've used some lubricant but this is still quite a difficult job. I have to back off the tap frequently so it doesn't jam in the hole. Breaking off the tap at this stage would not be funny. Also don't forget after threading the hole clean off any burrs underneath. And here they are, two pairs of crosshead guide bars almost finished. The drawing shows the top bars tapered slightly but I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to mill across the ends as shown on the drawing to accommodate the nuts that will go on top of the studs. And that concludes this episode about making the crosshead guide bars. I'd just like to say stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.